Welcome back to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life. You're back with Laurel and Laurel here at the podcast to help you with your inner work and to invite you into your beautiful life. Hi, Laurel. How are you? I'm well. How are you today? I'm doing great today. I'm feeling very chipper today. Lighthearted. You know, it yeah. is a really good feeling for a Monday. It is. It is. And, you know, I would say that one of the things that is a really important part of beautiful work, doing the beautiful work and doing your inner work, is to really just acknowledge where you are each day. And I'm not lighthearted every single day. Are you? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. I'm I'm not even lighthearted through one day, right? It's it's an up and down, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so to to get used to just taking inventory early in the day, right? How where am I today? What kind of energy level do I have? Uh, this is one of the most beautiful, I think, um, practices that we can offer to ourselves as self-care. We often tend to think of self-care as, oh, going to the spa or taking a vacation or whatever. You know, I like to think of self-care as like these moments, more moment to moment kind of ways that we do self-care and practice it to make ourselves more comfortable in our just everyday experience. And one of the ways is just tune in with yourself. How are you today? What state did you wake up in? What do you need today to make your day better or to, to take care of yourself, you know, in a way that will bring you through the day with more ease and more grace, as we like to say, right? So is that a practice that you have each morning or do you do it a couple times a day? Um, I probably check in with myself if I find that I have a big change in the day. I usually do it in the morning, but then if I if for something happens, like I, I go through something that throws me off my game or just suddenly I have a change in energy, a big shift in my energy in the day, I will do a little review, you know, of where am I? And how about you? Do you, do you do it as a practice too? I, I do. I, I tend to do it midday at some point, again, tied to if, if I notice my energy shifting and I, I have learned to notice my energy shift when it's increased energy or more lightheartedness or or decrease oftentimes i think we get into a mode of you know noticing when our energy dips as yeah. the time that we're wondering oh what is going on here that now i feel this dip mm -hmm. but i try to do it when i feel my energy lighten as well and then i i tend to do it at the end of the day like mm -hmm. as well like you know the recap of of how did I feel through the day? Mm -hmm. um, because I do think, and I coach clients a lot on this, learning to feel all of our feelings yeah. is really important. So important. And it really relates to our topic of our podcast today, which, which I know we haven't said yet, so I'm gonna announce it right now <laughs> so that we can start to like pull this all together, right? Because I do think that this, is a, this was a great lead in. So the topic for our, podcast today is tuning into your desires mm -hmm. and tuning into ourselves just regularly, right? Tuning into what's happening in our inner world, making more friends with our inner experience, um, allowing ourselves to really acknowledge all that's going in there, all the, like you said, all the feelings, noticing all the thoughts that are running through our mind, right? Beginning to be the witness of the inner life to me is tuning in, beginning that tuning in process. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the one of the things that I often do is tune in by placing my hands, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking about I, yeah. tuning in, what does my heart have to tell me? What does my gut have to tell me? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't often need to put my hands on my head for my head to tell me anything because my head is telling me things all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as I, but as I try to do, you know, my deeper inner work, mm -hmm. I try to not, I try to tap into my heart and my gut more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that one of the tools that is a beautiful tool for helping to um, shift in and out uh, of, of emotional experiences and being more head focused, right, is if we're overwhelmed with emotion, like 
letting ourselves discharge some of that through crying or shaking or writing or whatever. And then being able to come back to thinking, you know, like, do I have clearer thinking now? What am I really thinking about all that I just was experiencing or the emotions that I was feeling, right? To be able to do that dance back and forth to tune in into these different parts of our experience. I like to think of them as our intelligences. You know, we have emotional mm. intelligence, we have mental uh, faculties that are our intelligence. And we have a physical intelligence. Our body is always communicating with us physically. Um, and so if, if we're able to tune in to all of this, it gives us really good information about not only our desires, but our, this, first of all, to begin with, what, a, what is the state that we're in right now? What's yeah. the information that's in here? Trying that's to right. get our attention. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, and I would add, you know, spiritual intelligence too. Oh, yeah. We have the Absolutely. emotional, physical, yeah. you know, mental, intellectual, and spiritual. We have yeah. so much intelligence that yes. we can tune into if we can, for me, if I can quiet my mind enough to listen to the other. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, that was why I stayed, I think, with my meditation practice very early on was because I think my had such strong mind chatter that was really producing anxiety. And once I stuck with my meditation experience, it was beginning to tune into other parts of me, calm down some of the chatter, being able to notice the content of the chatter rather than being absorbed in it. You know, it had these um, uh, ways of detaching and not being so consumed by by what was going on and instead um feeling like it was providing me some information that I had some choice around right yes yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah yeah so when you think about tuning into your desires mm. are there other practices that you that you have I would say um probably the biggest one for me has been really doing some writing about what do I want? Yeah. And, and not editing, doing what I call unedited writing, like truly letting myself write whatever comes, not worrying about what anybody else, if anybody would see it, right. You have to, you, you have to free yourself of that because that's one of the worst things that you can do when you're journaling or doing self-reflective kind of writing is worrying about somebody reading it, right? We just want it to be for our eyes only. Anything goes, you could put anything on the paper. It's all good. And, and there is something so therapeutic about having you, the thoughts in your mind come out through your hand onto the paper it truly is a very therapeutic process as well as the ability to go back and look at it later and to, to be able to think about it more deeply over time, right? Yeah, how about Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Well, yeah. journaling is a big one for me as well. I process a lot through words, mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, in the last, I'm gonna say five, maybe seven years, um, the vision boards for me, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes we think of vision boards as just, um, you know, fun, creative, but not serving much of a purpose. Yeah. But what I've seen happen, at least with me, is the images of things that I'm attracted to that represent maybe the, the type of life I want to live or, or yes, the experience I want to have. Having them in a visual to look at is so incredible when you see it as a whole, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and recently, I think it was last fall, I, in cleaning out a few clutter areas, came across a notebook. It was, you know, the composition notebook that I had created in 2017 that had pages of vision boards. Uh, yeah. And looking at them, it struck me that all of those things I envisioned at that time and glued in that notebook are now in my life. Oh, wow. I so, that. you know, it really, for me, I'm, um, the visual is just such a beautiful way to tap into my desires. It is. It, I think it's really beautiful. And, and I think that uh, in terms of like 
just thinking about how our mind works and our subconscious, right? That our subconscious is like the storehouse of all that, you know, um, is, has, has been in our life, so to speak. And when we go to sleep at night, you know, we're dreaming, right? All of those are images, lots of images. And sometimes we might awaken with more words in our mind. I think if we're you know, more auditory or um, literal, sometimes that is, is how it works. But for most of us, like there are these images, right? And to prompt our subconscious mind um, by using the visuals of a visual board can be a, a wonderful practice for um, really kind of, um, it's almost like replacing it with a, a, a replacement for affirmations, right? Yeah. Like oftentimes yes. we think affirmations, right? Well, well, my mind won't believe that, but most of the time we'll look at an image and our, 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 our beingness is drawn to the image, right? There isn't necessarily the, the block that oftentimes the words might produce, yeah. Absolutely, and, and when I think that, you know, even as children, what we believe is available to us is often what we see around us, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the jobs right. that we think, um, and so how can, you, how can you create that vision of your desires, even if you don't know someone that is experiencing that yeah. same thing? Yeah, yeah. And that's making me think about this idea of how we limit our desires through, um, first of all, just only what we know, right? So kind of there's limitations set to a certain extent just by what we see, you know, what we think is possible. And then all the judgments around different lifestyles and um, uh, what we've heard along the way about what is right and wrong or good or bad and how they might have impressed us and how they might be stored in there in our subconscious mind. And we might re be trying, you know, we might be conditioned to reject that which we want or be judging it and keeping it away from us. And so how do we work with that? That's a really, to me, that's a really important part of tuning into our desires and moving beyond the self-imposed limitations that we've already might put have put there even unconsciously absolutely you know and when you were speaking about you know the written word and not wanting anyone else to read it yeah you know there is that danger of not sharing your vision with other people that enforces the limiting belief that it, right. that it's po possible right we go, is it possible? Is it plausible? Is it ridiculous? Like we judge our desires. Yeah. And so sometimes all it takes is, and we talked about this in a previous episode, being brave enough, being courageous to share your desires with other people. Yeah. 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 And I think you have to make a decision for yourself um oh, absolutely yeah like where are you there will be people maybe that you won't want to share it with because they they might you know take take the wind out of your sails or or you might not be in a strong enough place internally to stand up to the limitations they try to put on it so you know that's that's such a dance at the beginning i always feel like you know, your dreams and your desires are your like your little babies, your infants that need to be protected for a while until they can go out in the world and <laughs> do what they need to do, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I, I tell a lot of clients this, look at, you know, the, the um, inventions that have changed our life, yeah, right? Centuries of inventors who came up with these ideas of what was, what, yeah. you know, what, what they desired, what they wanted to bring to life. You can't tell me that people didn't think they were crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and so, I know. so how can we bring our, our desires to life mm. if we're not, if, you know, if we're, if we have to worry about that judgment, right? So find, I'm going to encourage all of our listeners, find one person. Yes. Some judgment-free zone. Yeah. See, uh -huh. the, yeah. if you can, if you need someone to tell a wild, crazy dream desire that you have, I'm your person. I will yes. believe you. Yeah. Yep. And I won't judge you. That's right. That's I right. will not. 
I love that. I, uh, oh my gosh, when you were talking, I had this like really strong, um, I don't know, it was an image or idea of this, this, um, like our, us bringing our, our dreams to life in the world that we live in today with such emphasis on uh, rapid, immediate response and immediate uh, success and immediate like uh, uh, feedback or whatever, right? This idea of uh, tuning into our desires and beginning to own them and allowing ourselves to start to bring them to life taking also the time thing away, right? Like, I feel like that's one of the most destructive parts of this uh, social media, insta, insta world we live in, right? Where we get this insta everything, it happens right away. You can manifest it immediately. It's like, oh, wait a minute, maybe not, you know, maybe not. <laughs> so to be able to just take away the time thing, not worry about that and allow ourselves to just let ourselves tune in to it and begin to acknowledge it, own it, make some space for it, play with it. How about just playing? Make it lighthearted, not make it a serious, I have to make it happen. As soon as I know it, now I have to make it happen immediately. Wait a minute, no you don't. <laughs> we put all this big no. stuff on it today, don't we? Yeah. Yes, and maybe that's another episode, you know, mm. separate from this one, you know, bringing your desires to life. But when we talk about tuning into them yeah you know i um one of the practices i have is i'm going to call the full sensory experience of a desire right mm -hmm. what does it look like what is it how how does it make me feel you know what what might it smell like what you know all of the things right yeah, the yeah. touch the the sight the taste the sound right trying to trying to embody it in my senses yeah. that help make it even more alive, if you will, right? That's it's great. no I longer, yeah, no longer mm -hmm. just an idea, idea, but yeah, really, you know, and thinking about the time and letting go of the timing or the schedule, mm -hmm. you know, I think that was something I learned, you know, pulling out that old vision board notebook that I had you know, 2017 was years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, all of those things that I have in my life now, I didn't have one year later after creating the vision board. It, yeah. took, it takes time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. So I, uh, let's come back to this whole idea of tuning in, not, not necessarily manifesting or actualizing our desires, but just tuning into them. So I love that, that you were just describing the sensory thing. Maybe that, maybe you come back and do a guided meditation on that mm. role and offer that to our folks, right? That would be that would fun. Be beautiful. Because I, I love what you're describing. I think that's like a, allowing or inviting your desire to become more real inside you, more alive inside you. Um, and how do we actually do that? So one of the things that, you know, always comes up for me is having space to just uh, allow ourselves to uh, just be, right? Our desires to me come from our heart, uh, come from our soul, come from like a deeper place in us that if we don't make space in our busy day-to-day -day lives, we may not have acknowledged. We, it, we, we can over, overlook them or, or oversee them, right? With all the other things that we're, our attention is going to. So part of this tuning in is making some space to actually be completely with ourselves and invite ourselves to open to what's in our heart. What's, how is our soul speaking to us? How mm. does your soul speak to you? Do you know the language of your soul, right? Yeah, in your heart. Mm. Mm. It's really good, mm. very good. Oh, I think that will be my exercise. My, my <laughs> offering to our listeners is, can you make space this week to actually just give yourself five or 10 minutes every day. Don't even call it meditation. Just call it time to acknowledge your heart, your soul. How would you do that? What would that look like for you? How, how That's going to be. Yeah. How might that be a, a kind of a playtime almost? Yeah. That, that's going to be fun to do this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do. 
Yeah. I, I think I would, I would challenge our listeners to really, to feel into, you know, feel into a desire, a dream that they have and really feel it through all of their senses um, to bring it closer to life. That's great. That's great. I, um, in, in my um, Live Your Inner Power journal, one of the exercises is to go back and think about what you used to play, what you used to like to pretend and play when you were younger. And sometimes I feel like that's, um, it like brings us closer back to the beginning before we may have gotten conditioned to be beyond what, what our, our little playful internal self wanted to be and express and, and um, embody in this lifetime. So to just go back and even look at that too, I think that's a worthwhile exercise in it, terms of tuning into your desires. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And or, then or, I have or pump, pumping, pumping the well in there, right? Oh, like it's yeah. a way to pump the well. Like, yeah, yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. And it, when, as you were speaking, it, it, I thought of one more thing maybe that is, um, you know, when you are thinking about your desires or you're, you're starting, you're starting to, to tap into your desires when your head gets in the way and gives you a judgment about mm -hmm. a particular desire, perhaps you could just ask whose story is that, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a limitation that comes up where, where, who told it that to you, where did you hear that? Right. Let's start, start feeling into are your limitations yours or are they, have they been given to you? Yeah. And if you decide that they're self-imposed, mm. how is it serving you? Right? Because our self-imposed limitations serve us in some way, or they have to date to keep us safe, to keep us on the straight and narrow, <laughs> to whatever, whatever, however they might be serving us, right? And so the question then becomes, are they, will they still serve you? You know, will that, will that limitation or that judgment serve you now given who you are now and what you want now like maybe it's worn out its service and it's time to go into retirement so to speak <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an, there's another topic that we've got to dive, dive into absolutely because, you know i mean it's true as we as we tap into our desires we may have had desires previously that are no longer serving us, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe something that I desired, you know, five years ago doesn't light me up anymore. And is it okay mm -hmm. to yeah. be grateful that you experienced it and let that one go? Yeah, yeah. So I wanna mm -hmm. encourage our listeners to take some time to tap into your deep desires, the deep desires of your heart and soul. And I truly believe, this is my opinion, we started out with one of Laurel's opinions, I'm gonna close it out with one of Laurel's opinions. I truly believe that for our listeners, if your desires are coming from your heart and soul, they are placed there to make the world a more beautiful place, to make the world more alive, more harmonious, more beautiful, more however you wanna think of, more exciting, whatever it is, right? But I think they're placed there for the good. I don't think that they're there for harm. So I would trust I agree. yourself. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. Okay, Laura, oh, off we go. Thank you so much for our time today. I loved chatting into this topic. I thought it was really, really important um, to inspire our listeners to own really what they want in their heart and their soul. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Thanks. See you again. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. All right. Bye-bye.